We've all been there before. We're unhappy with a certain part of our lives and we want to change. So we tell ourselves, tomorrow I'm going to start running 5k every day for a month so that I can lose these extra 30 pounds of weight. The rest of the day we feel really good about ourselves. Proud that we decided to make a change and said enough was enough. Then tomorrow comes around and we're awoken by the alarm that we set. We remember our goal, roll over, and get back to sleep. <laughs> Why is it so hard to make a change? The reason here is multifaceted, but a lot of it comes down to how we set up the goal for ourselves. So let's break it down. Right off the bat, we started off on the wrong foot. We put the task of making a change off to the future instead of committing to it straight away. Subconsciously, what we're communicating to ourselves is that the change really isn't that important, and instead we've relegated it to some abstract moment in the future in which we may or may not follow through on our intentions, no matter how good they may be. Instead, aim to commit to a change as soon as possible if you want to successfully establish it as a new habit. Because if you aren't willing to commit to it now, then what's to say that you'll commit to it when that abstract moment in the future becomes the present? Life only ever happens in the present, and therefore the only time change can happen is in the present. So if you're serious about doing something, then do it as soon as possible. But let's say you actually did get up and start running. In that case, there's two likely outcomes. The first is that you're out the door running and you're feeling great. 10 minutes in though, it's a different story. Your heart is pounding and your breath sounds more like wheezing. Eventually you stop, turn around and walk back home before having reached your 5K goal. The rest of the day, instead of feeling proud and accomplished that you at least got up when you said you would and ran as much as was with, within your current physical capability, you beat yourself up for not having met your goal. So the next day when the alarm rings, the negative associations you formed with, ha with running the day before and any other time you've tried to establish it as a habit are at the forefront of your mind. So you roll over, disable the alarm and get back to sleep. But let's say you actually did push yourself to run the whole 5K. The second option can still be problematic because by the end of it, you were probably so exhausted that you swore to yourself never again. At which point you start wishing that you had just rolled over and gotten back to sleep while you still had the chance. That means that you're back at square one or maybe even worse off because like in the previous scenario, you now have negative associations tied to running and maybe even exercise in general. So are you just doomed to fail, forced to accept your destiny as unfit and seemingly lazy? No, you aren't the problem. The problem is in the fact that you, you told yourself you're gonna run 5K after years of inactivity. The moment you did that, you stacked the odds against yourself. Why do we do this? Again, the reason is multifaceted. We think we won't see significant change if we don't do something drastic. We think of 5K as a cool and impressive number, and we want to see ourselves as cool, impressive people. Plus, it's a number that we've been trained to think of as one that a fit person can easily do. So by deductive reasoning, if we can run 5k, then we must be fit and one step closer to achieving our goal. And while yes, this is true, it doesn't mean you have to run 5k right now. Like the old saying goes, we have to walk before we can run. And I think in this case, it can be applied pretty literally. <laughs> After years of inactivity, you probably can't run a 5k and that's okay. What's important is that you introduce more activity into your life. And yes, this can look like walking like the old saying goes, but it can also just be jogging for shorter amounts of time and or distance, or, or swimming, or doing stairs, or biking, whatever flo floats your boat. The benefits of setting a goal which you can actually achieve are several, but they fall under two main categories, mental and physical. By setting a more manageable goal, both the mental and physical hurdles you have to overcome to do it are a lot smaller. And since they're a lot smaller, you're a lot more likely to follow through. 
And once you do, you'll have the satisfaction and gain the confidence that only comes from doing something that you set out to do. So if you only ran half a mile this time, then a mile starts looking a lot less intimidating. Plus, your body will be better conditioned to actually run that one mile. And once you can easily run one mile, then you can increase it to two, and so on until you can eventually easily run 5k. Without all the mental and physical suffering that comes from setting a goal that's too mighty and unrealistic. As a sidebar, this may seem to counteract my first tip where I told you that if you're serious about doing something, then do it as soon as possible. But by running half a mile first, you are working on eventually running a 5k. You aren't putting that goal off into some far off future. You're just being realistic about where you are now and what it takes to get there. So now we're in a pretty good spot. For the past week, we've been setting smaller goals and accomplishing them. This has given us the fuel to see the challenge through for the whole month like we initially set out to do. At the end of the month, we whip out the scale, anxiously set one foot on it, then the other, and heart pounding, look down as the scale finally settles down on a number. Only five pounds less than before. Suddenly, all the energy and motivation we had built up towards attaining our goal vanishes, along with any newly found confidence. When we look in the mirror, all we see is failure. So, even though we had been on a pretty great track for the past month and were almost at a point where we could honestly say that running had become a new habit, the next day, when the alarm rings, we roll over, disable it, and get back to sleep. Unfortunately, habit forming is a finicky process, and there's a lot of room for failure at the beginning. So even though we avoided a lot of the initial pitfalls, we were only ever headed towards failure. Similar to the last pitfall, we set too extreme of a goal. That's why it's important to research your goal before beginning. <clears throat> Had we done that, we would have learned that a healthy rate of weight loss is about six to eight pounds a month. So losing 30 pounds would have either been impossible or life-threatening. We might have also learned that diet actually contributes a lot more to weight loss, and we might have shifted our methods to reflect that, therefore making a lot better use of our time and energy. So now you can see why, in the way we originally set up the goal for ourselves, we were almost guaranteed to fail. There's power in the setup, and just by making these tiny shifts, you'll hugely increase your likelihood of success. And the best part is that this applies to all habit forming, not just to running and exercise. As a summary, here's a quick list of do's and don'ts. Don't delay. Don't set unrealistic goals. Don't have unrealistic expectations. Do start as soon as you can. Do set more manageable goals and do your research. Unfortunately, these aren't the only hurdles in successfully establishing a new habit. So I have a playlist of videos that address habits and habit forming. I'll leave a link to it here and in the description below. Also, before you go, leave a comment letting me know what your experience with habit forming has been. I also want to learn from you guys, so I really look forward to reading what you have to say. But as for right now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.